the basic idea of the play is uh, how something, an act of creation or an act of beauty can stem off an act of violence. It's the story of two young students at a high school in a small town, probably a Midwestern small town, um, and they're sort of ostracized by the school. They live on the fringe of the, the student body. And they befriend a teacher uh, who's a young teacher who has just come from a school that had a school shooting and she's got some baggage with her, with marriage and her past. And it's sort of a three-cornered love story in a way uh, between the, the students and the teacher. And uh, it's, it's the young boy has been, uh, he's been targeted by other students and bullied. Uh, it's it's uh, largely about the issue of bullying in the school and he's befriended the young girl as his confidant and the teacher gets involved with it. And it's about a boy trying to move away from violence and he gets pushed closer to it and then he escapes it through an act of creation. I'm hoping that the audience uh, embraces these two young students. They're, they're, they're difficult to embrace because they are on the outskirts. There's some, uh, there's some language in the play. Um, it's a very heavily language-oriented play, but there's also some, uh, some rough language in the play. Uh, we've trimmed a lot of that out, but uh, it's still there, and that's just the vernacular that these two kids speak. Uh, it's not meant to offend, it's just what I hear uh, when I'm on campus. <laughs> you know, I teach on a campus and I hear the language, and I don't want to change it when I put it on stage. These two students are the underdogs in this story. They're the dog, the, the, the dogs. They're the people that are sort of pushed to the periphery. Um, they're people that, oddly enough, when we are living day to day, they're the people we allow to be put, pushed to the periphery. When we see it on stage, we have great empathy for them. Sometimes we have more empathy in a theater for them yeah. than we would in real life. Right. These students in a school are the outcasts. These students in a theater are our heroes. When you write a character, uh, the difference between writing prose and writing drama, when you write a character, you are writing want-driven behavior. Mm -hmm. You're writing behavior. Uh, when you're writing prose, you're writing narrative. And uh, if a writer can make that leap from writing narrative in a book or in a short story to writing actual behavior, because we don't say things unless we want things. We, that's, uh, our, our speech is a strategy mm -hmm. to get something. Mm -hmm. And once you achieve that, then you can write dialogue. Um, and so a lot of writers will write what I call prose narrative in dialogue form. Let's speak prose out loud, which is bad playwriting. But there is narrative in plays. They do tell stories in plays, or they do describe sometimes in plays. And I wanted to play with that and see what kind of uh, 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 noodling around I could do with that. And uh, so I created a boy who's a storyteller. And he doesn't just tell stories, he envisions them and there is an overlay of sound as he tells a story and he says the wind came up, you'll hear the sound of the wind. You know, if you, you, hear, if you hear a cow in the field, we will hear the cow, we'll hear what he's hearing as he tells the story. Uh, so it's that sort of creative narrative. I didn't even know this was going to be a play when I started it. Uh, I mean, I, I, I wrote scene work. I wrote this opening scene of Peck and Dora talking about Pavarotti, and uh, and I it, I made the scene pretty broad, and I looked at it and I said, okay, well that was fun. There's no way I'll put that in a play, and there it is. It's the <laughs> first scene of the play. <laughs>